everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today and today on the 11th episode of How to Get Good at World of Warships, we're going to talk about battleship positioning in more detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first show you what is very typical battleship play. You see this with a large majority of uh, battleship players um, who do poorly in the class in terms of positioning. And I want you to look at this clip and tell me what you're noticing is wrong. If the very first answer you have to this question is, hmm, this repub doesn't seem to be using all of his firepower, you are correct. The failure to utilize all firepower is a big mistake for a lot of battleship players. They'll sometimes angle in a way that they only use their forward guns. Now, in the case of the repub, if you only use the forward turret, you're using 50% of your firepower maximum. You have to find a way to use all of your firepower. This means that in order to do this, you have to understand the way the game mechanics are. You have to understand how penetration works, you have to understand how auto bounce works, you have to understand how armor angling works, and all those things added together allow you to bring all of your firepower into a fight. That's the first thing. But positionally, what are you noticing? If you're looking at this and you're saying, I think the positioning is making it so that the enemy team is going to angle very easily towards this repub, you would be correct. It is another mistake, and this mistake is being on a similar axis, typically a singular one. In this case, if you're looking at where the Alabama is and you look at where the repub is, the enemy battleships like this Kremlin, uh, the Amagi behind, the Vladivostok behind him, they just have to point their bow roughly towards both ships and the chances of either battleship being able to do good damage to these enemy ships is very, very low. This is another massive issue. A lot of battleship players do not understand that in order to get the maximum impact out of their ship and their firepower, is to try to find a crossfire position. Not only try to find a position, but also how to create said positions. Now, obviously, by this point of this particular game, the rep who's already put himself into a really bad position, so not much more he can do to fix this thing. He has to do it sort of earlier on. The impact is, if you are in the right kinds of crossfire positions, you can do significant amounts of damage. And if you end up not doing those significant amounts of damage, your team will be the ones to do it. So what I will do over the course of today is to show you how to generate those type of opportunities for yourself. So first things first, this is a game I had in a Yamato. And we started the game, and I decided actually not to leave the middle area that I spawned in because we had a big, mass of ships, as you can see on the right-hand side, and there's a pretty big, sizable group of enemies on that flank as well. Now, you'll see that their Yamato and their Des Moines, they're all angled towards the stuff that would have been in front of them, that big group to the right. So as long as I stayed here in the middle, I would get very easy crossfire opportunities. This Yamato is actually fortunate that that salvo only hit him for 13k damage. Um, four penetrations and one overpen. Should have gotten more because I am in an ideal position. I've gotten this side shot and the thing is when I'm here, it's very difficult for the ships over there to deal with it. Their only options really is to try to move themselves into some kind of cover so that they can stay angled to the things in front of them while I continue to drop shells on them. And this salvo on the other hand, look at that. 27 and a half thousand damage salvo and the Yamato is forced to move himself into a not very good position. Now, of course, when you're trying to establish a position, what you're really trying to keep an eye out on is if I decide to, let's say, be an anchor, right? Let's just use an anchor sort of analogy. If I'm anchoring a position and I become the high threat and enemy battleships have to angle me, then what I'm trying to do is create an opportunity for my own team to maneuver onto some kind of flank so that when they're pointing, let's say, their bow towards me, so they're angled towards me, they're showing off some kind of side to uh, my teammates. If they're angling towards my teammates, then I should be in a position where I can exploit the sides. Um, and as you can see, that Yamato, not healthy at all, um, you know, went from very, very healthy to very unhealthy in a very short period of time. This is the number one thing that a battleship is going to try to do 
in the course of a battle. Find crossfire opportunities. Now, of course, it's not as simple as just simply sitting in one position for the entirety of the game. You do have to maneuver and you do have to move and you do have to think ahead to get yourself into those said opportunities. That is essential, right? If you cannot maneuver, if you are just stuck in one place and you just don't move, then eventually the battle evolves to a point where you're not having much impact. So you really have to constantly be thinking about it. Battleship play in terms of the shooting or whatever is a lot slower, but the positional aspect is significantly greater. Here's another example. Um, I'm in a Roma in this particular game. And actually starts off actually kind of badly because um, I get caught by a Yamato Salvo right here. And it chunks me for, you know, a massive amount of damage. We're talking like 36,000 almost. And as a Roma, I lose 36,000 HP. That's not a happy thing to do. But still, I don't just go, oh, you know, I lost 36,000 HP, forget it, I'm just going to go do whatever until I die. Maybe I'll just YOLO into something. No, no, you don't do that. You still try to play the game to the best of your abilities. You still try to have maximum impact. In this particular game, this flank that I'm on is a defending flank. So if you haven't watched the basic positioning video, which is episode 10, you should go watch it, where I talk about pushes and defenses and, you know, how typical games kind of um, go during the course of a match. I'm on the defending flank, so I'm going to try really hard to try to stall this flank, don't get pushed out here, occupy these enemy ships for as long as possible. Because if you're taking a look at the mini-map, the other side is where we have the pushing advantage. There's a lot of ships there, so I'm waiting for them to push through and come support this side. All the while, I'm making myself as difficult of a target for these enemy ships. What that means is utilizing my concealment, you know, popping up shooting sometime and then disappearing again. So that they know that I'm here and that I am a threat, but that I'm not like, you know, constantly being targeted by them, right? I'm already relatively low HP in this game due to that earlier um, Yamato salvo, so I'm not going to be reckless. Luckily, of course, I am in Aroma, and Aroma is a relatively stealthy ship, so you'll see me, at times, I will pop the DCP even on a single fire just to disappear, fall off detect, so I can reposition and say hello. You can also see that the enemy team, after chasing us for a while, is going to get a little tired. Okay, So what I've been doing so far is giving ground, giving ground, not just giving it freely, not just you know running away to the A-line as quickly as I can. No, I've been angling, running, shooting, angling, running, shooting, right? And at a certain point in time, I'm watching the minimap and I'm like, alright, when is this enemy team going to decide that I'm not worth chasing? And they're going to turn around and go do something else. And it starts to happen sort of right around here. Yamato, the turbots, the other Yamato's already turned away. They're deciding that I'm maybe not worth chasing. So right at this particular time, I need to stop running and I need to re-engage because you'll see that the far side group, they're coming back in towards the B cap right now. So what's going to happen is if I turn myself back around and I come down now, we are going to create a crossfire situation. So these enemy battleships are going to be showing me some kind of broadside and they're going to be pointing their bows towards the pushing in team. And that will be the perfect opportunity. Of course, I am playing a Roma, and Roma has a tendency of disappointing me um, with the occasional wonky dispersion, which you'll see in this game. Still, being in the right kinds of positions is going to make a difference because even though I'm not very accurate and I do not get the amazing shots that I kind of want, my presence alone is going to cause the enemy team's ships to do things that maybe they don't necessarily want to do. So you can already see that their attention is now focused on this group that's pushing in, right? And this group that's pushing in from the seaside, which already has the destroyer on the B cap. So all their attention is already there. And I'm going to get basically broadsides or quasi broadsides to shoot at. Again, like I did say earlier, Roma is going to find ways to disappoint me, but... I'm going to have to live with that, that's <laughs> just how the ship is. If I was in a more accurate battleship, um, you know, getting in this kind of a position is quite scary for the opposing team. They're definitely going to have to find ways to um, get themselves out of there, which is, you know, maybe taking cover, which is maybe trying to disengage from the positions that they were in, which were originally good positions, so on and so forth. Furthermore, when they do this, you can also see that our heavy cruiser, and this goes into a little bit of cruiser positioning, although that's not really the focus of today's video, the cruiser also starts to re-engage as well, and this is also very key as well. Uh, you see a lot of cruiser players where they will just keep running away, like, you know, they're entering kiting position, they, that mentality sticks. And that's the big shift that you got to remember. You can kite, you can give ground, that's not a problem. 
but you have to find the opportunity to re-engage. Kiting away is fine. You know, in this side, if you looked at this um, flank, there was very little way as a Roma I'm going to be pushing into two Yamatos. It just wasn't going to happen. I can kite. I can give ground. But at a certain point in time, there's a way to push in again. Remember in that basic positioning video where I did talk about how most World of Warships games end up being, you know, just two flanks. One pushing, one holding. Either, you know, in some cases both pushing or in some cases both defending, right? Um, it, it is a two flank game until, of course, one flank wins. In that case, then it becomes sort of a pincer maneuver. And then, well, whatever happens, happens. Typically, whichever team accomplishes the pincer, the other team loses. All right, so you can definitely see uh, Yamato Turpets here getting a bit more damage. Looks like I'm gonna have to probably move just a little bit more to my left because I want even better broadsides. In this particular kind of angle, uh, they're broadside enough already, but I want a little bit flatter. You know, I want just that better chance to get stuff. Uh, here we go, catching this Yamato as well. Ah, Roma. <laughs> ah, if I was in a Kremlin or something, this game would be so different at this stage just because of the accuracy. Anyways, uh, enemy CV decides to come in as well. So I'm going to continue to reposition myself. Don't ask what the CV was doing. This is a really weird strike. Um, I'm going to come around this uh, island here, uh, right there. I'm going to come around this island and hopefully get another broadside. So you can also see right now that our Yamato has actually gone down. So we have a Mosfa here and this Yamato here. This Yamato is actually still pretty healthy. So watch what ends up happening with this Salvo here. The Salvo comes in. Watch this. Bang. See that HP? 13,000 damage is not amazing. Really could have gotten more, but I've cut his HP down enough where at this amount of HP, Yamato is not comfortable. Gets hit by the rocket planes from LCV as well. 14k versus still a very, very healthy Mosfa. Mosfa with its HE DPM can actually take care of that Yamato by himself. So that Yamato, you can see also, he really has no choice. He does have to push forward and he has to either go for some kind of ram or something at least to take the Mosfa out. The other Yamato over here, again, you see originally maybe he would have been able to stay and support uh, his fellow Yamato dealing with that Mosfa so that both of them can survive. He can't. He knows that I'm here. He's got to move, right? And by moving away, he's leaving that Mosfa alone to fend for himself. Venezia on their team, well, again, he's got to make a decision. Uh, does he run away or does he try to help his Yamatos by maybe pushing the two of us, right? And the Albo and myself in the Roma. He decides to push. And now he's basically in a fight against a battleship, which he's got to angle to, and the cruiser, who's also come in. Remember what I said, cruiser players, you also do have to re-engage at times. And our cruiser did do that. Came in, re-engaged. See it? Venezia's now got to try to deal with one or both of us. He knows that I'm on a reload cycle because I did fire. So he's deciding to try to angle against the uh, elbow. But elbow gets torpedoes off. So you can see this Venezia is in a bit of trouble there. Actually gets clapped by shells, but anyways, all right, regardless, good, you know, sort of two-on-one -on -one situation. Yamato's down there. All right, come on, shells, do your stuff. All right, got a salvo off. That's not bad. You know, 10k damage, again, could have been better. Um, there, Yamato is still trying to push onto the Mosfa. I think they're going to end up in a ram here, actually. All right, let's see if I can get the rear gun out here. Looks like no joy. Nope. So... I'm going to, again, try to pull a little bit of an angle um, just to see if that Yamato will come out and show me enough of his cheek because it takes him a while to actually, you know, turn around the island, right? So I'm going to see if I can get uh, some of his cheek and if I can cheek him, get another Citadel or something, I can probably uh, settle this fight for our team because they're down to just that Yamato at pretty low HP and the one carrier. So this game goes to show you, you could be a lower tier ship, um, but hey, you can kite, you can give some ground, especially if you're on the defending flank. Of course, if you're on the offensive pushing flank, you know, and you're in the bottom tier ship, you can also lend your guns to support, right? You can try to get those side shots. You can try to position yourself so that the enemy has to angle the more threatening battleships and then you bring your guns into play. Battleship guns in this game are quite strong. They do good work. All right, so this is a tier six game. Here's a situation where I don't overmatch enemy ships, but they overmatch me. So you'll see that there's a Queen Elizabeth, there's a War Spite, and I'm in Dunkirk. Dunkirk is not one of my favorite ships in the game. Uh, she does have certain quirks, of course, being a tier six, she's fast. Um, all her guns are forward, but her armor is pretty weak and her concealment is not great. So what do I do? I'm positioning myself over here uh, and I'm going to try to engage ships like this Queen Elizabeth and then ideally later on I'm going to try to create some kind of crossfire situation against their war spite. 
um, which is right behind me. So there we go, salvo number one. You can see I'm actually not even moving here because there's no need yet. Only ship of threat is actually this Queen Elizabeth as of the moment. The other battleships are still a little bit further back and they're not necessarily here yet. So for now, engaging this Queen Elizabeth. Now pay attention to where uh, the other battleships are on the minimap. There is a uh, war spy Koenig Iron Duke closer to the cap, a good distance away from where I am. And of course, closer to me, there is a Queen Elizabeth. If you take a look at our positioning, you can begin to see that there is some kind of crossfire. Not perfect, but there is some kind of crossfire. Enemy Warspite has of course moved out and is able to get guns on me, so I'm going to start to move a little bit more. Ideally, what I constantly want to do is create some form of situation where the enemy battleship always has some threat on their sides. Um, of course, this uh, Queen Elizabeth that I'm shooting at right now overmatchable by the war spite but remember there is a big group of battleships there so the queen elizabeth sort of still has to try to pay attention to that flank has to try to angle there's a queen elizabeth on my side as well so this queen elizabeth that sort of put himself in the middle of this horrible crossfire not in a good position i'm actually just pulling distance here because i know what's behind me and i know that if i stay there for too long i'm gonna get hit pretty hard and that is probably going to cost me my ship if i stayed there so pulling more distance Continue to shoot at that Queen Elizabeth. Hopefully that QE goes down. The minute that QE goes down, I'm going to probably disengage from this flank. Because really, as a Dunkirk, 15,000 HP, two good war spite salvos, and I'm probably going to be underwater, right? And plus I've got another 41 seconds on my heel. Yeah, I need to get out of here. And there goes the Queen Elizabeth. So again, pay attention, because the war spite, the Koenig, the Iron Duke group, watch them start to move up. They're going to start to move up, and I'm going to move down. Right? Take a look at their current position. So I've sort of reshifted the uh, battle a little bit into the future. And you can see where they are. Look at where I am again. Another crossfire. So if they're going to angle the war spike Koenig QE, then I'm going to have broadsides to shoot at. Now, this Congo actually did try. Uh, eventually realized that he's just up against overwhelming forces. Decides that he's going to try to disengage. And by disengaging, now he's, of course, angled and kiting towards them, but not to me. Right? And so I'm going to come out here. And you'll see this very interesting effect on this enemy team. The whole attempt at pushing down that flank kind of comes to a standstill. Their war spike comes out, but look at what he's up against, right? He's up against, and he's, of course, also broadside, but he's up against a whole bunch of stuff. He's not going to last too long. But their war spike, their Koenig, they're not going to come out. Because if they were to come out, what would happen is that the war spike would pop out, and he's going to be overmatched, first of all, by the war spike and the QE on our team. And if he tries to angle them, he's going to be somewhat broadside enough for me to shoot at. And if I come out and I engage him, then there's no way he's going to be able to angle. War Spite ends up getting caught by some kind of weird like indecision, like uh, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, so I'm going to do a lot of nothing. So for me, as a Dunkirk, seeing that he's just not going to move, I'm switching over to High Explosive. Because I know that he's going to be kind of stationary, maybe kind of staying there, maybe he's going to try turning out. But regardless, even though my AP can't do much work, my HE certainly can. So I'm going to try to hit him with HE, maybe set some fires, and maybe it's going to cause him to disengage. But regardless of what he does, if he comes out the wrong way, he's going to be broadside in front of our War Spite. Who is going to hit him really, really hard? Okay, War Spy decides to shoot at me. And of course, fortunately, it's an HE salvo. So this enemy War Spy over here, very likely, maybe has a lack of game mechanics knowledge. Uh, doesn't understand that his War Spy overmatches me and decides to shoot the wrong type of ammunition, where the return salvo is going to hurt him a lot more from my team, right? Because they know what they can do with the ammunition that they're shooting. Okay, so I do attempt an AP salvo, it's a little on the late side, uh, this Warspite does manage to fully turn away, so of course, back to HE, because um, had that Warspite decided to keep going broadside, then, you know, that might have been a good salvo, but no such luck. Um, of course, this Warspite looks like he's probably retreating now, so because he's retreating, I'm going to start pushing up as well, uh, and as I'm pushing up, using all the four firepower of the Dunkirk to sling AG, and hopefully I'm going to get uh, this War Spite down here. War Spite's not very healthy already, 13,000 HP remaining, uh, there's uh, more HE damage down to like 9k, got Destroyer over here, um, trying to do Destroyer things, mostly by pew pewing a little bit. Okay, let me see if I can get another HE salvo on him. Okay, you're going to eventually pay attention that you'll see where the battleships on my team are and you'll see that with my speed, I'm again going to try to reposition and create some other kind of opportunity. But you'll see that in a little bit here. War Spite there. Okay, hit him again. Come on, I, I should be able to get this War Spite down, right? I should. I mean, 5,000 HP. 
Come on now. Destroyer's landing in, uh, you know, some shells as well, getting some additional damage. 5,000 HP left. Oh, come on, Dunkirk, don't disappoint me now. <laughs> Sometimes in games, you know, you never know. All right, there's my fire. Hey, look, this wars fight is really hurting now. Okay, Destroyer's getting in the last couple shells here. Oh, so close, so close to getting this wars fight down. A couple hundred HP more. Okay, this should be the finishing salvo right here. 200 HP. Okay, there's the finishing salvo, I hope. Okay, you'll see that the Aoba on their team is deciding that he's just going to push. Uh, not the greatest idea. Yeah, okay. Anyways, we're, we're not going to talk about why I don't like Dunkirk sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, enemy Aoba decides that uh, they're going to push. And of course, pushing battleships is never really a great idea unless it's a one-on-one -on -one scenario and you're absolutely confident. Battleship won't delete you. This Aoba decides to go for a very YOLO-y kind of run, which isn't really going to work, considering two battleships over here both know what they're doing. Salvo number one, there's 11,006 uh, on the Aoba. We know what he's doing. He's going to go for the torpedoes. So the worst fight on my team very likely is going to try to, as you can see, turn himself away and try to pull a little bit of distance. So if there's torpedoes coming, he's buying himself an extra couple of seconds uh, to deal with the torpedoes that are incoming here. Okay, and finishing salvo right here. All right, so there we go. And you can see the torpedoes, and you can see the war spice plenty of time. Perfect. All right, now pay attention once again to the next opportunity that has created itself. So I've pushed myself up. Look at where the Queen Elizabeth is on my team. Okay, do you start to see another kind of crossfire happening? Yep. Enemy war spite over there, who's already pretty low, generally has to try to angle to the Queen Elizabeth. So as long as I come up right to the side of this island here, I'm going to have another broadside. Right, And that's what you constantly are trying to look at uh, when you're playing a battleship. In fact, a huge chunk of your game can literally be played by staring at only the minimap, just paying attention to what the enemy ship is doing, where your ships are, and what you can do. In random games, just kind of remember, what you're trying to do is trying to create almost like a triangle type situation. You know, draw a line from uh, your friendly battleship to yourself, and then your points converge onto the enemy ship, and it should look like a nice uh, triangle. Not one that's very, very narrow, but kind of a nice balanced triangle, you know, sort of the what an iconic triangle shape would look like, you know, the perfectly nice even sides or whatever. That creates the crossfire for the two uh, battleships, uh, where the enemy target cannot angle against both of them uh, efficiently. Okay, so War Spike goes down. Um, and then it's just this one remaining Koenig, and of course this game is settled. Just sort of keep in mind that the primary roles of a battleship, okay, are to use your armor and your HP pool to help your team either hold a flank or to push a flank, okay? Furthermore, you're trying to bring your big guns into play during the most opportune moments. Yes, there's some situations where, of course, if you're overmatching, you're going to be able to constantly fire your guns because you get overmatch damage. But in cases where you're not able to overmatch, look for the better positioning type plays. You get into a good position, you know, you catch the enemy in a crossfire, there's so little they can do, you're guaranteed way more damage, okay? Um, instead of just pew, 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 and getting very, very little damage, but always giving away your position. If the enemy knows exactly where you are all the time, they can plan to play around you. But if there's a little bit of a, gee, I wonder where this guy has gone, that adds a certain degree of uncertainty to what the enemy team is trying to do. There's always going to be that extra, oh, what if he appears here? And really what you're thinking about as a battleship is how do I appear in the sort of most uncomfortable type positions? So in this game, as an Eisenau, I'm going to show you something that's sort of similar to that, right? I understand the characteristics of my ship, right? Few guns, yes, but the guns are overmatch capable. They are reasonably punchy uh, in terms of penetration, at this tier at least. Uh, an Eisenau is fast, she's got good armor, so I'm going to try to flank. I'm going to try to very, very aggressively flank. I also understand that the enemy team over here on this flank only has two battleships, a New Mexico and a Nagato both of which I overmatch. So where in other situations, like for example, when I was playing the Dunkirk, and I would eventually consider, hey, you know, pulling away, falling off the tech, repositioning. With Nizenau, in a situation like this, I know I can go after him. So we're skipping forward a little bit later on in this battle, and I'm gonna appear in a very, very unhappy place for the enemy battleships here. So I'm on the side of this Nagato. 
But this Nagato cannot just turn and try to you know, mitigate my damage, because take a look at where the North Carolina is on my team. The North Carolina is a really scary battleship if you're playing, let's say, a Nagato or New Mexico. If the North Carolina knows what they're doing, you know, they'll stay so angled that there's nothing you can really do. So my appearance in this position is not a happy place for these two enemy battleships because they can't run away from me in this kind of situation. And I overmatch them both, right? So I'm going to push quite aggressively on this side and with the North Carolina where the North Carolina is, again, try to draw the little triangle. You'll see that me and the North Carolina, we have relatively good spacing from each other. And these enemy battleships are really on the same sort of vector, the same kind of axis, right? You'll see that they are essentially in the same place. And if I wanted to angle both of them, it's really easy to just point my bow in their general direction and I angle against both of them. Only reason I'm actually showing a little bit more side and trying to go this way was because I was a little bit worried about the Amalfi's to, uh, potential torpedoes and where they might be going. Now, with the torpedoes out of the way and avoided, uh, the pursuit continues. And this Nagato is not going to have a good day because, again, I can overmatch the armor. Can't really mitigate my damage unless he's trying to use his main belt to try to bounce my shells. Um, other than that, right now, these two enemy ships are in a really bad spot. Now, let's do a bit of a thought exercise. Imagine if for a second, myself, the Ismail, were both clustered with the North Carolina. If we were all on the exact same axis, it's going to be a little bit easier for the New Mexico, the Nagato, to potentially get away. All right. Part of it is you could always have the Bliskovica come in there, lay a nice smoke line, right? That blocks vision. And again, because vision is coming from a single axis, maybe they slip away. Another thing they could do is they could turn away, um, you know, go closer towards the border, angle their belt armors towards us and try to bait shots off of the belt armor. That's another thing that potentially could have been done. But the fact that I'm able to come around and basically be like, hey, look, I'm here. It's very, very hard for the Bliskovica to try to you know, help his team by laying a smoke line because I would then be providing vision. And so if there was a smoke line, the effort would have been um, sort of for nothing. This was a kind of a wild dispersion on that first shot there, but at least the other one the, with the rear turrets, okay, that got something. Nagato is freaking out in chat, but that is to be somewhat expected because what is these two battleships going to do? Nothing. You know, they're slow, they were out of position, and they got caught, essentially. Um, and that's another thing as well, all right? Understand the capabilities of the enemy ships and your own ships. Do things early. Don't try to leave them for the last second. If you look at the thing and you go, oh, this is not good. Look, this is where their big battleships are, or their fast battleships are, and I'm not going to be able to deal with these, then you need it to go away, like, a lot earlier. Enter kiting positions a lot earlier. Um, one of the things is if you ever watch uh, the sort of the good players versus the not so good players is pay attention to how early good players look at a situation and go, oh yeah, that's not good. Let me start entering kiting position and I'll fight my way during the kite. Remember, when you're kiting away, you're at an advantage in a fight regardless, right? Because you're pulling distance, you're possibly controlling the uh, engagement distance a little bit more, and you're also easier able to sort of bring all your guns out into the fight while staying reasonably angled. So, you know, kiting away ships generally have that advantage, right? Pushing ships you usually have to take a little bit more risk to show a little bit more sign or to get all their guns out, and they're a little bit more vulnerable to things like torpedoes and things like that so if you are more aware and that's another thing as well is if you're more aware of what's coming um, again by looking at the mini map you count the enemy number of ships that are a threat to you you count the potential dangers you look at it and go okay that's not good it looks like we're going to be on the you know sort of defending flank then you know defend earlier if you look at a situation where in i in my case i looked at it and said look we have an overwhelming numbers advantage here i have speed i have armor i have all these advantages plus overmatch i'm going to go for it battle rolls up very, very nicely for us. So I hope this video is a little bit more uh, helpful for you battleship players out there. Key things to remember is look at your mini map, find those crossfires, okay? Do not end up on the same axis as your other battleships. No one to kite, basically no one to give ground, no one to push, okay? Don't charge in for nothing. You see a lot of people, they just YOLO in for nothing. Don't do it, okay? Don't throw your ship away. Your firepower is incredibly valuable. You could be bottom tier, you could be a bottom tier battleship, but if you're maneuvering yourself into the right positions, your guns can still hurt, even if it's just purely penetration damage, okay? Don't YOLO in, all right? Too many battleship players, they'll just be like, whatever, I'm just gonna YOLO in, die, and then you know they'll complain about their team doing nothing, when it's like, you gave away your ship, you had this HP pool, this armor, and you just gave it away for nothing. Number three, don't keep running forever, 
okay? You have to re-engage at the right time. So you'll see players, they'll sometimes give ground and then they just keep giving and giving and giving and they'll just run to the end of the map. Don't do that. Look for the right opportunities, re-engage at the right time so you can get into those broadside positions and engage. And number four, you have to understand game mechanics so you can use your maximum firepower and you can also use your armor to protect yourself. Understand what overmatch is, understand what armor angling is, understand what auto bounce is so you can utilize your ship to the max. Anyways, folks, I hope this video has been helpful to all of you. I hope it improves your battleship positioning and improves your battleship games. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section below. I'm sure myself and other people will be happy to help you as well. Other than that, take care, have yourselves a really good day, and I'll talk to all of you again really, really soon. Mm -hmm.